Well, I'm Chris and this is my doorbell part two video. In this video, we're gonna talk about transformer locations. We're gonna draw a little map out. There's the breaker box so that you can understand where the components are, where I'm getting power and how everything is wired 100%. So I have a how to wire that doorbell in real life video and we added ring and hardwired it. Since the video, it's been on the house and the battery stays above 90%. I think it's on 99 right now. Okay, so the sheetrock had to come out because I made a mistake and that's what we're gonna explain where everything goes and how to wire that 100% so that you don't make any mistakes. Now the mistake was not a big deal. I was able to fix it. That's why it's all right there because we're testing it out. So let's go ahead and test it out and make sure that it works because some people just have to see that. Okay, so doorbell is right in the middle of the house. We walk to the front door. Okay. All right, so you heard the front doorbell, and then this is the back door. It's not on there yet. And see, we can't button all the sheetrock up until we get all this done. Now, this goes through that hole that goes out to the back door. So you can see the button is lit up. So everything works. It's ready to be buttoned back up. Now, we're going to draw a picture diagram of this house in real life so that you can really understand where the wires are going and where we're getting power from that transformer. Let's go up there and look at that transformer first. All right, so we gotta go up into the attic. Ah, this is creepy. So we're up here in the attic and I haven't really tightened anything down yet because of the insulation. But you can see right here, this is the living room light. There's a wire going right there to a box and there's the transformer right there on top of the ceiling joist. So front door, that was a light that's giving power to our transformer that's sitting like right there in the attic. So then the transformer is right here and then there's the breaker box. So let's remember all of this when we draw this wiring diagram. Okay, so the first thing is I ran my transformer off the living room light. The reason is because the transformer steps the voltage down and releases heat. Now this thing gets as hot as touching a hood of a car in the middle of summer. So it's not gonna burn the skin off your hands, but it definitely can cause some pain. Now, paper burns at 451 degrees Fahrenheit. So I wire it to the living room light so that when this is on, it's charging the ring and my doorbell works. Now, I said ring. So this may not be an option if you do not have a ring doorbell because the ring is still going to record video whether it's being charged or not. So if you're worried about that like I am, run it to your living room light if you have a ring and you'll be on the safe side. So just talking about that because this thing runs 24 hours a day. It's hardwired into your electrical. Put this in an area that's gonna get a draft through it if you can, just letting you know. But like I said, I have a ring, not for everybody. Keep that in mind, put it in a ventilated area. Now the transformers, you go in forums, there's people having all kinds of trouble with this stuff. If we're looking at the last setting, 24 volts with 20 volt amps, and they'll recommend getting a 24 volt with 30 volt amps. And it's not this one, it's another brand. So let's talk about what that is. So the problem is mainly with this wire because it's so small, but like I said, you want to use it so anyone in the future or wiring in there knows what this is for. So that's why I got this transformer in the first place because it's eight, 16, and then 24 across those. So whenever I was having trouble with my doorbell, I thought I needed more power, so I wired it to 24 volts. So let's talk about what I found out. So this is the rear doorbell that was giving me so much trouble. It turned out being a wiring issue, just so you can hear it work. It works 100% now. Okay, so we have our transformer in the ceiling at 16 volts, and let's see what it actually is out here. 13.3. So whenever I put this on 24 volts, I was actually getting 16.3 here. So it really does make a difference with how long your runs of cable or wire are. Like I said, don't wire it to the light like I did unless you have a ring doorbell or you're just totally fine with that because if I don't want anybody ringing my doorbell, I'll just turn my living room lights off and uh, nobody's gonna bug me. So I'm not telling you to hook it up to the living room light. That's not how it's supposed to be done. It's supposed to be hooked up 24 hours a day. And like I said, that transformer stays warm runs 24 hours a day. I don't feel comfortable with that for two reasons, because I don't want to overcharge the ring. I'm pretty sure it shuts itself off, but I heard stories about people running too much voltage to them and burning them up. I haven't had that problem so far, but like I said, when I leave every day to go to work, I shut this light off and then 
the freaking doorbell doesn't work but my little transformer up there is not buzzing or getting hot releasing heat so in my other video i have a wiring diagram but that was before i actually put it on the house i didn't have any problems with it until we did the rear doorbell so this is my revised for 2020 got our front and rear doorbells okay so in the beginning i talked about the breaker box because i see where people like to run the transformers at the breaker box the transformer has nothing to do with the breaker box there's no reason to wire this at the breaker box that's actually the worst place to wire your transformer so we have the chime right there now if you're only running a front doorbell ignore this and you want your transformer in between these two so we can go ahead and put our transformer right there this one is 16 volts ac now if you run a rear doorbell too you kind of want these two as close together in between the two doorbells. So the reason we wire it like this is because of voltage drop. This is your bell wire that you're going to use so that anybody in the future can come in here and know that that's what this is for. You don't just run any kind of wire for this kind of stuff. So that's pretty much how it is in my house. Remember that my transformer is getting power from the light that turns on with the switch. Now your other option would be to run that transformer back to where the switch is getting power so either way the transformer location we're finding the closest outlet whether it be a light or a plug but in the ceiling it's going to be a light so that's where we're getting power for our transformers so that's how come it's hard to answer that question because everybody's house is different okay so this is super confusing to wire this up and you can screw this up real easy you got to wire one switch at a time we got to get from the front switch to the farthest component let's wire that up first you're going to take one piece of red and white wire we got to run it here. We got to pass the transformer all the way to the chime. Okay, so it's AC. It doesn't matter which color you choose to use, but we're going to go in and run one red over here to the transformer like that. And then we're going to take the other side of the transformer and run it over here to T on the doorbell. Now we have the white wire and we're going to run it straight over here to front doorbell. So in my other doorbell video, I'm not sure if I screwed the wiring diagram up on the rear doorbell. You got to think of it as two separate circuits. Do not try to cut into any of these wires to power the rear. That's what I did and I screwed up and that's why it's all out and I got to fix it. So that's our one circuit for the front. The rear doorbell has nothing to do with that circuit, but we have to share the transformer. A little tip is to switch the wires around so that when you're here, you know that those wires that are switched are for the other doorbell. We're going to take one piece of red and white. Remember, we got to go from the switch to the farthest component. So we're going to take the white off the transformer we're going to run it just like that so then the other piece of white goes over here to our switch so then we come off the other side of the transformer just like that and remember if you have electronic doorbells to put your diodes in okay so let's recap on what i screwed up so i didn't run the rear switch wire all the way back to the transformer since the transformer went from the front switch to right here for some reason i thought that I could rob power off of that wire. Absolutely did not work. I had to go back up in the attic and run a separate piece of wire. That's why I'm making this video to help you out so you don't make the same mistakes I did. I just had it like that to test it. Let's practice what I preach and get it back in there and wire it just like the diagram. So when I ran this originally, I had wires from the front switch and wires from the back switch coming both to here and that didn't work out. We needed the rear switch to go back to the transformer. So that's why I had to add this other piece in here. So let's go ahead and wire it up just like the diagram. So the bell wire, if you put bins in it, cut it off and start over. Okay. In case you didn't know, those little holes on your strippers are to bend wires. Always bend it in the direction you're going to tighten the screw. So then our front doorbell, remember red was transformer. So we need to put these on there like that. All right. So then this is coming from our rear switch and this is going to the transformer. So remember, we're going to switch these wires. So we got white from the transformer here. So then we need to put the other white to the rear doorbell right there. Okay, so we got these two left. We need to connect these. Until it starts twisting the wire, don't go crazy. You'll break it. Okay, and always put some tape on these so it doesn't undo itself for some reason. Okay, so I left the little labels on there because it's got to come back off to do the drywall. For right now, it's all good. I just wanted to make an update and let you know that everything is working 100% fine. You can see we finally get some tape on there, some mud. Fixing that doorbell costing me a day. Now we can get back in here and finish taping and floating this freaking living room. Turn this house into a home again. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.